Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are dealing with staff tool strategies again. Specifically, we're looking at staff attributes, the behaviors portion of the staff attributes. And uh, before we even get to that, let me just um, kind of show you how you to get to the staff attributes window, because actually there's several different ways. And... Um, you know, it's kind of nifty to know about uh, how to do this. So the first way to get to the staff attributes window is from the staff menu when you're in the staff tool. Uh, we can just choose edit staff attributes. And if nothing is selected, then the staff attributes for pull down menu will select the first one in the list here. And of course, you can go through and choose whichever staff you need to change the staff attributes for. If you have a staff selected, like the oboe there, and I choose Edit Staff Attributes, then it will actually pull that up automatically for you. So now it says oboe. So that's uh, the first way to get to the Staff Attributes uh, menu. The second way, and this is actually my preferred method, is while you're in the Staff tool, just double-click on any measure, uh, and it will pull up the Staff Attributes for whichever measure on whichever staff you uh, double-clicked. So I just uh, pulled up the Flute 2 there. I can pull up Bassoon 1 Staff Attributes just by double-clicking. So that's the second way to do it, and that's actually how I prefer to do it. Um, the other way to do it is to just select a measure again from the staff that you want to open and press return or enter and the staff attributes for that selected staff will open up. So again, just any uh, selected staff will pull up the staff attributes for that staff. And then also to get to the staff attributes, uh, you may know that in the staff tool, uh, the staff tool will pull up this little uh, handle here in the upper left corner of every staff. If you right click that, uh, we do have the option to edit staff attributes. And again, this will pull the staff attributes up for whichever uh, handle you uh, uh, right click. All right, so there's the staff attributes for oboe. We can also do this directly from the name of the uh, staff too. So if I do English horn, right click the English horn handle, I can also pull up the edit staff attributes and get to the edit staff attributes window. So lots of different ways to do this. And wait for it, there's even one more. Without even going in the staff tool from the selection tool, we can get that same contextual menu by right clicking any staff name. And again, if you hit staff attributes here, you'll pull up the staff attributes for that particular staff. So if I do clarinet one here, there's the staff attributes for clarinet one. All right, so lots of different ways to get to the staff attributes. For some reason, my preferred method has always been just to double click. So you'll probably see me doing that a lot just out of habit, but there are many other ways to do it. Now, in the last video, I gave you sort of a quick rundown of the staff attributes and, and what the purpose of it is. Uh, you can see in this window pulled up here that there's four sections here. There's behaviors, independent elements, appearance, and uh, items to display. Now, all of these options, all of these settings here, whether they're, whether they're checked or unchecked, whether or not you're using an alternate notation, the full staff name position, all this, whatever you see in this window applies to the entire staff uh, from the beginning to the end, depending on which one you have selected. In this case, I have Flute 2 selected there. Um, and it's important to realize that these staff attributes will apply to both the score and the linked parts. So however you have it uh, set up here, this is also going to be how it's set up in the linked part. Now, it's possible to get the attributes different between the score and the part, but that actually, in many cases, requires the use of a staff style because staff styles can be applied either both to the score and the part or to either just the score or the part. So there is some flexibility with staff styles, but generally the staff attributes will apply uh, for the score and the parts. There are some uh, specific exceptions, particularly in the items to display, where you see things like staff name in score versus staff name in parts. So uh, same thing with time signature and uh, down here for part score and parts. So those two options in particular um, will allow you to check one or the other, uh, you know, between the score and the parts. It's allowing you to parse those two options out. But uh, that's pretty much it. Everything else, um, you know, applies for both the score and the parts. So the portion of the staff attributes that I want to deal with today is the upper left corner here where it says behaviors. So we're just looking at behaviors today, which is uh, three, six, seven, eight different options. Now the first option here, allow hiding when empty. Um, I'm actually going to skip this a little bit because I, I talk about hiding staffs uh, later in the series. So uh, come back for that. Um, I'll put a link in this video if I can to that, uh, that video. And uh, the next one we're going to look at is break bar lines between staffs. 
Now, this really has to do with um, when you have bar lines being drawn between staffs, which, will, which would only occur if you have groups. Now, groups are, uh, as I mentioned in the first video, sort of groups of staffs that are uh, grouped together with a bracket, and in some cases, they have the, uh, the bar line being drawn all the way between uh, the group. Uh, a lot of times in choral staffs, you won't draw this bar line, but that's actually a group setting, which again is an, uh, another video later on in this series. But with the staff attributes for break bar lines between staffs, this will override that setting in the group attributes if you want to. So if I check the break bar lines between staffs for flute two, it will break the bar lines above the flute two uh, line here. So that's the trick to that is that uh, you're always breaking it above. So as you can imagine, um, unchecking that, oops, let's go back here and uh, uh, uncheck that for flute two, but uh, unchecking that for flute one, or checking, sorry, checking that for flute one would have um, no effect because there's no bar lines being drawn above uh, flute one. So that's the break bar lines between staffs option. The next option down there is uh, break repeat bar lines between staffs, and this is very similar to the break bar lines between staffs options. Now, generally speaking, if you're going to break the bar lines between staffs, you probably also want to break the repeat bar lines between staffs. So it's almost, um, you almost always want to use these two options together, and when you do check those two options together, it will also break the repeat bar lines here. See, if I had unchecked the break repeat bar lines here, um, you'll see that the repeat bar lines will still get drawn through even though the regular bar lines don't. Now there's sort of an odd behavior when you select the uh, break repeat bar lines but don't select break bar lines uh, because what you'll get is actually a um, bar line that goes between here which uh, looks a little odd because you know it just looks odd um, and it also doesn't um, do it properly you know it, it adds this bar line uh, in the left repeat but not in the right repeat so it's sort of a bug sort of a weird functionality but again I don't see why you would ever want to have one of these checked without the other um, so you know uh, again, it's, it's a weird bug, but almost s uh, something that you would almost never encounter anyway. So let's look at that next option down called Display Rests in Empty Measures. Now, as you can see, Finale does this nicely where you don't have to put in the whole rests for every single bar if the instrument's not playing. It, pu it puts a default whole rest there. But we can change this behavior if we want in the staff attributes by just unchecking display rests in empty measures. And for flute two, now you'll see that there are no rests in this empty measures. This is particularly handy uh, if you're doing score setups for orchestrators that work by hand. You can actually print out sort of blank scores um, without this uh, annoying um, rest in the middle of the bar that they're going to have to write around. Um, so, you know, th this is what you would do if you want to set up uh, a score for an orchestrator working by hand. So that's the display rests in uh, empty measures option. The next uh, option down has to do with flat beams, and so I have a couple of measures of uh, beaming here in the clarinet part just to show you this. Uh, we can choose the flat beams for a clarinet one, and you'll see that every flat beam in the entire uh, staff um, will become flat. So no matter what notes you hear, you can never have uh, angled beams. Uh, so this is uh, one, uh, one quick way to do this. Um, if you want all of your beams to be flat, you can just do this. You don't have to go and flatten every single beam. Now there is um, there is a, uh, a universal way to flatten the beams in the document options, and it is under beams. And um, if we choose uh, uh, flatten all beams, essentially what you're doing is you're forcing Finale to flatten all beams regardless of what the staff attributes say for flat beams here. So uh, the document options version is a completely universal option uh, if you, if you want to use it that way. Uh, the staff attributes will be a flat beams option uh, for any given staff uh, all the way through. And then, of course, we have a sort of local option if you want. You can select a certain amount of measures, and there's a plugin that will uh, flatten the beams for you automatically so you don't have to drag the beams around. It's under Note Beam and Rest Editing, Flat Beams, and you'll see that you can flatten just those two measures without uh, affecting the third in this case. So uh, the Flat Beams options in the Staff Attributes, uh, that's what that does. This is a sort of universal per staff option for that. 
Next, we have this force hide staff option. And when you check it, you get a pull down menu to do a, a, a three different ways to force hide the staff. I'm going to skip over this a little bit because, again, this is relating to hiding staff. So uh, check out that video uh, later in the series to uh, learn more about what this does. And moving on, we have this ignore key signatures option. I'm just going to check it so you can see what happens. Um, it brings it back to the key of C major, although in, for the clarinet, which is a transposing instrument, it actually transposes it to C. Um, this option is in incredibly confusing, and it's actually a legacy option in a finale. Um, and let me just read to you from the manual what finale says about this option for it to ignore key signatures uh, in the staff attributes. Ignore key signatures. Finale retains the setting for compatibility with older versions uh, with older version files. Select this option if you want Finale to transpose all the notes in the staff to the key of C for the entire piece, regardless of any key changes that occur. So again, this is just sort of an old way of uh, or having no key basically, uh, and it's really old because I really don't remember when this was a, an option that was used. Somebody that uh, has been using Finale just as long as I have may have to remind me about um, when this option became obsolete. But the bottom line is, don't use it. There's better ways to have um, uh, you know no key signatures in Finale now. And then finally, let's look at the redisplay accidentals in other layers within measures. So this is going to make a lot more sense if we have multiple layers, which I do in this piano part here. Uh, so let's take a look at this option for the right hand. I'm going to check redisplay accidentals in other layers within measures, and it will do pretty much what you expect. So now you see that G, which uh, didn't have a sharp on it before, uh, becomes sharp. So you're, again, you're redisplaying the accidental uh, because the note uh, appears in a second layer. Now, one thing it will not do is it will not redisplay an, a cancellation accidental, which I kind of figured out. Uh, you see that the A natural here in the, the second layer going to the D natural here, even though there's a D natural in the uh, first layer here, it does not get displayed there simply because the uh, the natural is actually returning to the key signature. So that's a, a strange little limitation, maybe, I guess. I don't even know if I would call it a limitation, but it's uh, just a quirk of how that works. And uh, we can do it on the, the left hand, too, so you can see uh, the results of all that. And you can see even in layer three, I have this uh, G flat here, it will redisplay that accidental. So again, it's doing exactly what it says, which is redisplay accidentals in other layers within measures. Now, it's possible you may be um, curious about some situations, like what, where I have this trumpet uh, two and three part here on the same staff, and this option is not checked for the trumpet, and uh, so you're not seeing the A sharp in the second layer. Now, there is a way in Finale, uh, this is uh, something I, I will get to at some point, um, to separate voices out for um, uh, linked parts. So you can see in my edit parts here, I have trumpet one, two, and three, even though there's actually only two different trumpet lines, trumpet one and trumpet two, three. Uh, it is possible to parse out um, voices for uh, uh, different parts here. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly, I guess if this works the way you would expect it, even though this option is not showing redisplay accidentals, um, you will still see the accidental in the trumpet three part in this case. And just to prove it, I will go over here just to point it out. So now you see that the uh, the A sharp is actually um, uh, uh, you know displayed there in the trumpet three part. It doesn't matter if you check that option here. Actually, I'll do it right here just to show you. Uh, so you'll see it in the score now, and it will make no difference um, in the trumpet three part. You'll still see that sharp. So uh, in case you're curious about that, you don't really have to have that option um, checked if you're doing uh, voiced uh, linked parts like that. So, All right, so I think that covers it. That's pretty much all the behavior section uh, in the staff attributes. And um, so, yeah, so uh, we're well on our way to learning about the staff attributes. Um, come back. The next uh, video I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip to the bottom right section. We're going to talk about the items to display. And uh, that will be an, an interesting video as well because there's a lot of options here. And uh, we'll go on our way with staff attributes. All right. So thanks for watching. Once again, my name is Jason. This is Conquering Finale. And I appreciate you joining me. And I will see you soon on the next video.